There are a lot of components when it comes to teaching a class. It's hard. And sometimes when you're doing it week after week, month after month, even year after year, you can get worn down. I hate it when I hear a teacher come and say, I think I've lost my effectiveness to be a teacher. When really what I think might be happening is that they're stuck in a rut. So what we want to do is be able to show you some of those components of what it is in a classroom so that you can re-energize some of these things and find some new exciting ways to engage your class. So let's go talk about some teaching. So let's see if we can identify and isolate some of those concepts and dynamics of what is happening in your classroom. Let me show you. So let's see what this looks like. Inside of your class, there are two main components. On one part, you have the people. And the next part, you have context. Let's see if I can break that down even further. Who are the people in your classroom? Well, there's two main categories. There's you, the teacher, and then there's the students. In the context, the context of what is happening, why they're in that room, why they're gathering together, they're gathering together for content, and they're gathering inside a classroom. That's the physical space. So the content, what is that? The content is basically your lesson. Think of that as your lesson. Inside the lesson, you're either making it your own, you're writing it yourself, or you're going from a curriculum. Most times you're doing both. And there are illustrations. There are delivery methods. Maybe even some materials like handouts. We'll talk about that in a later week. So all of that is the content. You have organized all this content for this class, which moves me over to this teacher. So what, who are you as a teacher? Well, you're seen as the leader and that can get tiring. I totally understand because you're also supposed to be the cheerleader. You're supposed to keep everybody excited about the lesson every single week. You're the organizer. You're one, when people come into class, they are expecting some form of organization. You're the, you're the main organizer. You are the leader. So the students, their role really is to be learners. They're the ones who are being inspired. And that inspiration takes them into new areas. Maybe they will, they'll become a teacher. Um, they are the ones who are growing, becoming, finding new interests, new passions because of your lessons. So we have the people, we have teachers and students. We've talked, we have context, we have the content, we have this classroom. What is this classroom? Why is that important? I want, we're going to spend some time uh, over the next couple of weeks and talk about that classroom, your classroom. You can, you can use your classroom actually as a tool that furthers everything else in here. So this classroom, what is that? This is your arrangements. How do you, how do you have your classroom arranged? How do you have your room de decorated? What kind of activities and things do you do inside that classroom? So this is the context, all of these things, and this is the people. The question is, what's the most important one out of all four of these things? You may be saying to yourself, Steve, there is no way to determine what's most important. I want you to watch this carefully. This question of what is most important, what is most important, This drains us, 
if we misunderstand what, what it is that's important, this also distracts us. So what truly is most important? Let's, let's try to put this into a continuum, all right? So let's say that you, probably not by statement, but would say that the teacher is most important, okay? There are some lessons where the things that you, who, what you're doing, you are the most important. Some would say the students are most important. So look, there's a continuum right there. Where are you on this continuum? Think about the way that you run your class. Think about the way that you, uh, ex the expectations you have of your class. Which is most important? Is it teachers or is it students? Now, there is no right or wrong answer here. So what is the next part of this continuum? Let's say we have content. What if we say that the lesson is the most important reason that we're gathering together? We're gathering together to teach the Bible. The content of the, of the lesson is the most important thing. What about the classroom? The things that we do in that room, the activities that we do in that room, the, thing, the way that it's decorated, how you have it uh, decorated uh, and arranged. Let me say this too, the classroom, the place where we fellowship. So this could be seen as a fellowship part too. Is it content or is it the classroom being together? Which is most important? The, the, the question is, when you see it this way, you realize that some of us may be, we are teacher content heavy. And so we'd be over here. Some of us are teacher classroom heavy, meaning we have all of our lessons and we have the room decorated and arranged just the way we want it. But we're missing a lot of other parts. We're missing the connection with the students. Uh, we're missing a lot of things. But then we have classroom students. So we are we want our the fellowship to be the most important, the things we do together to be most important. Do you see what I'm saying? How about if you're a student and content? What does that mean? That you, this is where you find a lot of those group dynamics um, and group group uh, projects coming together. So you have the content and the students working with it a lot. So it's not really teacher focused, it's more student focused. Now I want you to see this right here. There is no right or wrong answer. I want you to think of it this way. Where is your <clears throat> target? What's your target? And so I want to perhaps encourage you to say this one thing. This target is movable. It, it'll, it'll move over here, it'll move over here. And if you look at your lesson, you pre-plan some of your lessons and think, okay, this lesson sounds like it could be more towards, I can get this, your classroom working with the content, doing some things, maybe with a handout working together to get some answers out. But maybe there's a lesson that's really, really hard. It just takes a lot of background teaching, um, things that you're gonna study for, and so you're going to present the material. So some lessons might be more, might be more teacher focused. Some lessons might be more fellowship focused, more classroom focused. I want to help you by saying that your lessons don't have to be the same place in this room every single time. Your target can move. Now there's a good thing and a bad thing about that. Let me show you that. <clears throat> Very simply stated. You can move it. You can move it. Like I just said, so you can move it. It doesn't matter. You decide what your lesson is going to be, and you can move that target to be in that area. You want to move your room around for one week? Let us know, and we'll, we'll change the arrangement for you. You want to change your content? You can do that. You can change this target to what matters most for that particular lesson. Now, here's the downside of this. Ready? <laughs> Very simply, a frown. It also moves by itself. If you're on automatic pilot, <clears throat> this target will, will move on its own. A lot of times your class, the students will, be, 
if they're not engaged, they can actually move that target to something else. They will begin to be distracted with something else. Maybe your classroom is too distracting, it's hard to focus. It'll move on its own if you're an automatic pilot. <clears throat> so what I wanna do for the next couple of weeks is show you and encourage you and maybe reinvigorate you so that you can know that you are in control of where your target is for this classroom. It's exciting. And so we're gonna talk about your classroom. We're gonna talk about the way that you organize your lessons. We're gonna talk about the people, uh, the students. We've already kind of covered some parts of that with um, how to teach to the five uh, needs of people. We're gonna finish that also. I'm excited for the next couple of weeks. 2003 is gonna be an amazing, amazing year. I'll see you guys this Sunday. It's gonna be fantastic. I like to